Hi, I'm Patrick Jaguer with Cosmic Alchemist Astrology, and thanks very much for tuning in to this exciting episode. So today I want to talk about the Gemini New Moon, which will be at about, it'll be perfect at about 11.40, 11.45 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, so here on the East Coast of the United States of America. So before I get into it, thank you to everybody who likes these videos, watches these videos, comments, subscribes to the channel. It's all very helpful. It's very encouraging to me and I appreciate it. And if you are not already a subscriber, I encourage you to do so. You'll get an alert every time I upload one of these new videos. So enough of that. Let's get into the topic. So yeah, Gemini New Moon, New Moon. 13 degrees of Gemini, and uh, like I said, about 11.40, 11.45 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So, interesting new moon. I don't make one about every one of them, but when they look interesting, I'll tend to make a video. So, yeah. We have um, kind of some interesting degree placements, and we've got three planets at home, so, yeah. I thought I'd give everyone my two cents. So this new moon, it's going to be 13 degrees of Gemini, like I said. That is in the lunar mansion, the nakshatra, the constellation of Ardra. So Ardra is one of the smaller constellations that makes up Gemini. If you're not familiar with Vedic sidereal astrology, instead of deacons, we have the lunar mansions in the sidereal system. So Vedic has this, the Chinese astrology has it. A lot of the sidereal, visible sky astrology systems use this, these lunar mansions. So there are 27 lunar mansions rather than 30 deacons. So each sign has about two and a half of these lunar mansions. And in many cases, there's overlap. So a lunar mansion will straddle two signs. So, but in this case, Ardra, Ardra is fully in Gemini. It's in pretty much the middle degrees of Gemini. Each of these are 13 degrees. So, yeah, so it's about two and a half. Um, yeah, a little less than two and a half, but anyway. So Ardra is interesting because it's one of the lunar mansions that sits at galactic center. So galactic center, basically the Milky Way, runs an axis through Gemini and Sagittarius, which are opposite signs. So the lunar mansion in Gemini, that galactic center runs through, is Ardra. The one in Sagittarius is Mula. These points, when the nodes, when the dragon's head, dragon's tail, Rahu, K2, line up with galactic center, that's when, well, it's one of the times when really crazy, shocking things happen in the world. But, they're very regular when this happens. And this is every 18 and a half years. That's how long it takes the nodes to do basically one orbit of the zodiac. So, yeah, Gemini, the one in Gemini, Ardra. Ardra symbol is the um, teardrop, the howling winds, the storm winds, ruled over by Rudra, the uh, storm god of the Vedic pantheon. So, Ardra deals with basically the destruction of things so that something new can take its place. So, and then in Sagittarius, Mula. Mula, the symbol is um, basically the root ball of a tree. So it's like a tree's been uprooted. This also deals with destruction and new growth. So, yeah, every 18 and a half years, 
when, well actually really, I take that back, I was going to say about nine years, but it's really the 18 and a half. It's, it's especially when Rahu is in Gemini, K2 is in Sagittarius. When it's flipped around, when you have Rahu in Sagittarius, K2 in Gemini, the effects aren't so strong, but it can be very similar. So, having a new moon in Gemini in Ardra at Galactic Center. So Galactic Center, this is where what you could call the highest vibrational energy in the galaxy emanates from because there's a giant star at the center of the galaxy. So a lot of radiation being emitted from there. Um, not just radiation as we understand it, but energies that our mainstream science doesn't yet understand. That affect our human consciousness that in turn affect our human world, our human society, and even the natural world, which responds to human consciousness. So to have some sort of major alignment in, on this galactic center, basically the planets involved will conduct this energy. And because, you know, the planets are basically a projection of our internal psychic forces. So when the planets conduct this energy, it affects us. So in this, this high vibrational energy, what it tends to do is it tends to disrupt our human world and our everyday lives because perception is basically an art and we have to learn through the course of our lives, through active learning and striving, how to see things clearly. And I see reincarnation as basically, it's like working a syllabus. It's like you're going to a school. Earth is a school. So it takes a long time and many lives and a lot of work to see things clearly. So the mainstream of the human world is really seeing illusions. They're not seeing the people and the things in their life and in the world clearly. So they see illusions. So when you have planetary alignments on its galactic center, it basically shakes up our view of things and basically destroys our illusions. So, like I said, every 18 and a half years, you get the nodes here. Crazy things happen. So February 2020, we had the whole, the pandemic launched and um, basically the campaign to get people to be pharmaceutical guinea pigs kicked off. And... Um, 18 and a half years before that, you had 9-11 and the police state rolling out, the national security state, they like to call it, military industrial complex and all that fun stuff. 18 and a half years before that, it was AIDS. Um, there was deception going on in there too. And then um, 18 and a half years before that, it was the deep state getting the U.S. military and U.S. government into a war in Vietnam. Before that, it was 1945 into 46. So it was the deep state wanting to test the atom bomb on civilian population in Japan. And then um, also basically the Nazis getting a new home and coming to America to build this country. So as we know it today. So yeah, really, really wild shit happens. So to get a new moon here, so new moons are all about conception because it's the darkening of the moon. It is, and the moon is a symbol for the mind, for the emotional, intuitive consciousness. So when you get a darkening of that, basically we can feel very separated. Our minds can feel cloudy and we can feel separated from our mental energy and we can just sort of feel directionless. Especially if this happens in the sign that your moon is located in or in your ascendant sign, you tend to feel these new moons more, just like full moons. So yeah, we we basically feel kind of cut off and kind of rudderless and you know, it can even have feelings of despair in it. But what's going on in the new moon 
is a conception is taking place, a seed is getting planted. And the new moon is the darkening of the moon, it's the darkening of the mind. So, basically the earth blocks the sun from shining on the moon, the shadow of the earth blocks the sun's rays, because the moon doesn't make its own light, it needs the sun. And the sun is symbolic of the soul. So, you have this soul-mind relationship with sun and moon. The mind doesn't make its own energy either. It needs the energy of the body and the soul to illuminate it, to animate it. So, yeah, we can feel very kind of cut off and sort of despairing and despondent during new moons, especially if you were born during one. If you're curious about that, I'd be happy to give you a reading if you want to learn more about that, how that affects you. Anyway. So, yeah, new moons can feel, you can just kind of feel down in the dumps, but it's always about planting a seed for something new. Because the new moon's like a womb, it's a dark place where things are conceived. The full moon, by comparison, is like a birth. Because we expel emotions during a full moon, we become fully aware of our emotions. And we let things go, we expel things. So, so this particular new moon... This is an interesting one. It's at 13 degrees, and there's an interesting resonance because not only are the sun and moon at 13 degrees, but you've got a Venus and Taurus at home at 13 degrees, and you've got a Jupiter and Pisces at home at 13 degrees. And the other planet at home is Mars, but it's at what? that one degree of Aries. So not part of this resonance. So before I get into the chart, a few more things about the new moon, Gemini and Ardra. So, you know, Ardra, again, it's all about, it deals with, it tends to deal with an overturning so something new can happen. Or just so we can kind of wake up and see what's really going on in our lives and our world. So, what's Gemini all about? Gemini, sun goes into Gemini in the summer, in June. So, Gemini is interesting. It's, it's, the, um, it's the sign of branching out and kind of like budding, you know? So, like, it's like how plants bud and they expand, you know, and they grow. You know, you can start with, if you watch a plant grow, over time, you know, you start with like a little sprout and it gets bigger and it starts branching off into all these branches. Or it's even in the spring, you know, you get intense outward growth. So the plants will grow vertically in the spring, but then in the summer, the leaves start to broaden and the plants get broader and more robust. So Gemini deals with that. Gemini deals with like branching off and kind of that, that broadening. Gemini also deals with, it's ruled by Mercury and it's the original ruler of the third house because Gemini is the third sign, so the original third house ruler. If you put Aries in the first, Aries is the first sign. So Gemini deals with skills of the hands, it deals with communications, it deals with media, it deals with friends, neighbors, siblings. It deals with kind of travel in your local area, short distance travel. So a new moon here, this to me is it's dealing with how we communicate with our social relationships and kind of with our community. You know, what does our community look like? What do we want to build in our community? How do we want to rebuild our communities? Because the world we've been living in, especially the post-World War II world, but then the world of the age of Pisces of the last 2,000 years is falling apart. So we need to rebuild. We need to think about that. We need to be mindful about that. We need to not be spoon-fed by figures of authority Want what they want us to build for them. Because Aquarius has a dark side too, not just Pisces. So we want to be mindful and we want to be actively creating. So yeah, this new moon is all about 
planting a seed, a conception in how we communicate, how we get along with each other, how we build friendships, and what we want to build in our communities, how we want to change our communities. So then we've got this whole thing with the 13. So like I said, sun and moon conjunct 13 degrees of Gemini in Ardra to make that new moon. And then we have, um, like I said, Venus and Taurus at home, 13 degrees. Jupiter and Pisces at home at 13 degrees. So 13 is an interesting number when you look at it numerologically. On one hand, it's a combination of two numbers. It's one, which is individuality, and then it's three, which is all about creativity, because when you boil it down, there are three primal energies in the universe. You've got a, a positive, a yang, you know, masculine polarity, and you've got the, the yin, negative feminine polarity. And then you have the force in the middle, you have the third force. That's kind of like the grounding force, it's like the neutral force. Or it's even in the Qigong I teach, it's the lightning force, because you know, the three energetic forces in energy work, you've got life force energy, aka chi, aka prana, you've got kundalini, which is emotional energy, it's sexual energy, it's the energy of your personality. And then the mysterious third force is the lightning energy, which surrounds the heart center. So. That's a big thing in occultism and energy work in the esoteric is that third force. And it's that, that middle road in the Kabbalah, which strikes a balance between two opposites. So, yeah, 13, a fusion, a combination of individuality and creativity. And that's the best way to create is you discover your individuality. You get to know your own mind, your own heart, your own soul. And you basically create something from that that you can give to the world. And it's the most genuine when it comes from the real you. You know, it's not just a copy of something. Or it's not just something you think you can make money on, but you know, you give something of yourself. So individuality is extremely important to creativity. Really, if you're not being a true individual when you create you're just a technician and you're just you're probably copycatting another idea you're doing something that's you're basically implementing a bright idea and I always use that term bright idea kind of sarcastically because it's like how it's like how when you're growing up you know the adults the advice they give you they tell you what they wish they had become they're not really looking at you most of the time and kind of guiding you on a path that you're best suited for. Um, and then the other thing about the number 13 is it reduces to four. So four is the number of materiality, stability, it's the four directions, it's the earth plane. So kind of interesting. 13 is not an unlucky number. 13 is a very lucky, auspicious number. Basically, the church wanted, in the Middle Ages, wanted people to become distanced from magical traditions and esoteric groups and occult orders who used the number 13 because they knew how powerful and important it was. Kind of like the Knights Templar. You know, that's why the um, Friday the 13th was the day the Knights Templar were arrested in France, Friday the 13th, 1307. But anyway, so yeah, this new moon is dealing with that combination of individuality and creativity, but also, also stability, so creating, manifesting, if you will, in the physical world, on the earth plane. And, um, and again, you know, Venus is all about creativity. She's at home in Taurus. Venus is no stronger anywhere else. You've got Jupiter and Pisces at home. Jupiter is the benevolent spiritual teacher of the heavens, whereas Venus is the spiritual teacher on earth. 
And Venus is a protector of humanity. Venus can be a warrior goddess, so not just about love and, um, what is it, romance, you know, diplomacy, friendship, and all that. From a place of love, she is also a warrior god because she protects. So it's not, she doesn't fight to conquer like Mars, she fights to protect. So she's extremely strong. And then Jupiter, the spiritual teacher of the heavens, the guru, and that's what Jupiter is called in Sanskrit. Jupiter's at home in Pisces. So what this requires is this is all about whatever you want to create, whatever you want to begin creating with this new moon, you need to, ref you need to do some self-reflection, you need to do introspection, and really understand who you are and what you want. A Jupiter and Sagittarius would be more like go, 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 act, get it done, be more dynamic. This is more about reflecting on what you want and on who you really are. Um, you still have to act. Action is always necessary, but it's all about the ratio between you know, reflection and introspection and action. Sometimes you need more of either. Sometimes they need to be balanced. Um, I would say this is probably like a balanced, at this checkpoint, this checkpoint of this new moon, it's about having your action balanced with your introspection and your self-knowledge and really working that. So that's pretty neat. So three different signs, but you have this resonance of 13. Um, and then too, Mercury, the intellect, which solves problems, orders our thoughts, communicates. It's in Taurus with Venus. They're 11 degrees apart because Venus is at 13 degrees. Mercury's at 24, but still under the influence. And that, that Taurus sign that Mercury is in is very strong because Venus is at home. So the intellect can really get a lot done. Uh, Taurus deals with the material environment. It's like the sign of materiality. So we're going to be able to start to really do constructive things in our lives and in our communities and environments. Or at least we have the potential. Some other things going on here. We have Saturn in retrograde, zero degrees of Aquarius. Saturn's about to retrograde back to Capricorn. And since it's coming from Aquarius, it's like I've been talking about. It's bringing the will and the indignation of the people to bear against all forms of hierarchy and authority and government worldwide. So like I said, last Saturn retrograde, it was all in Capricorn. So basically the authorities were regulating and auditing and policing themselves. So... You know, it's the fox guarding the chicken coop, fox guarding the chicken house. Now, since it's starting in Aquarius going to Pisces, the people are going to get insights into what government's been doing, where it's been misleading, where it's been lying and deceiving. So very positive. And also on this day, 28th of June, Neptune stations and goes retrograde at one degree of Pisces. So Pisces is also a home sign to Neptune. I consider Neptune a co-ruler of Pisces. Neptune deals with divinity, deals with high spirituality. But then it also deals with delusions, deceptions, it deals with addictions. So it all depends where we meet this Neptune energy. Now another thing too, Neptune in Pisces is the sign Neptune was in during a civil war. So we're in about, if you look at the position of Neptune, we're in about 1858 right now, 1857, 1858. I just want to look in my notes here, get some notes about the year's retrogrades. Yeah, so Neptune retrograde goes from June 28th to December 3rd. So thing about Neptune too is when it goes retrograde, retrograde is all about correcting things. So Neptune reveals things when it's retrograde. 
Now another thing Neptune deals with, it deals with virtual realities because it deals with illusions and delusions. So mass media is a virtual reality because if you're not watching an event take place, if you're not watching somebody do something, television, internet, whatever, it's a poor substitute because that broadcast is staged in a very deliberate way. So you see it from a certain angle and from a certain vantage point. It's not like being there, being able to walk around and look around and see things from different angles. And those broadcasts are heavily edited and tailored to fit the needs of the sponsors who are paying the media companies. So, yeah, Neptune deals with virtual realities and that's mass media and, you know, the, the tools that deliver the mass media, so I'm talking televisions, smartphones, computers, laptops, you know, the whole bit. So, radios. So, yeah, and then happening in Pisces, it has a lot of power to do this. And then Neptune will slowly, through the course of those few months, it's going to move towards Aquarius. So, it'll bring that divine energy of Pisces, this awakening energy, back to Aquarius, we the people. So, pretty cool. The last thing I wanted to do is just, I wanted to put this new moon into the context of the natal chart for the United States of America. So, the United States of America using the birthday of, 17, of July 4th, 1776, and the approximate birth time, birth time of 6.30 p.m. in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That makes the United States of America a Sagittarius Ascendant, with the Ascendant at 8 degrees of Sagittarius. So that makes, that puts Gemini into the seventh house, because Gemini is opposite Sagittarius, and the seventh house is opposite the first house, or the ascendant house. So, seventh house deals with all relationships in our lives, all human relationships. It does deal with a spouse, but it deals with all of them, all partnerships. It deals with business, too, because seventh house deals with exchange. And the original ruler of the seventh house is Libra, the seventh zodiac sign. So Libra is all about balance, even exchange, give and take. It's like the give and take of business, not so much the money aspect, but the exchange and the give and take that's involved. So, yeah. So for America, with that seventh house in Gemini and a birth chart, you get three planets in there, you've got Saturn at zero degrees, Venus at 12, Jupiter at 15, Sun at 22. So this new moon, 13 degrees of Gemini, is taking place in between America's natal Venus and Jupiter. So this is dealing with America's friends and America's partners. Now, when you look at this seventh house, Having Gemini there, it means if we stick to our principles, all other countries are peers to us. We don't put anyone under our thumb. We've gotten away from that. You know, we're now the muscle for a giant financial and commercial empire that's global. But according to this chart, having Gemini there, we're supposed to treat other countries as equals. Now, having Mars, Venus, Jupiter, and Sun. So basically, the soul of America is in relationships and partnerships. That's really what we're supposed to be doing when we're being our genuine selves. Now, having Mars, Venus, and Jupiter. So having Mars and Venus in the same house is an interesting topic. When you have Venus at a lower degree than Mars, Venus rules the conjunction. Between the two because planets at the lower degree rule the conjunction they have more strength 
But then when you have Mars at the lower degree, it changes the whole thing. So Venus and Mars together with Venus at the lower degree basically makes somebody like very loving, makes them a good lover. Um, having Mars at the lower degree, that's like a telltale for domestic, domestic abuse, domestic violence. So yeah, this basically in the birth chart, it's saying that as a country we have a propensity to be abusive, especially with, you know, other countries, but even, you know, internally. There's this, basically, there's this lurking tendency toward abuse, um, which comes from fear. But to have Mars, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, and Jupiter like that, it's basically, Jupiter expands this Venus. And even this sun, where we want to, you know, we want to have partnerships and relationships around the world. And, um, you know, Jupiter and Sun close together, that can even make people a little egotistical because the Sun is ego, Jupiter is expansion. So even though, yeah, we want to have friends, we want to be friendly, there's this tendency towards egotism if we're not careful. Now, Mars is not, you know, Venus, Venus, Jupiter, and Sun, they're pretty close to each other. Mars is farther away. Mars is 12 degrees from the closest planet. So it's not extremely strong influence, but it's still there. It's kind of the turd in the punch bowl in America's seventh house. It's like this lurking tendency towards abuse if, you know, we sort of slip into the unconscious and we're not mindful of what we're doing as a country. So having this new moon right between this natal Venus and Jupiter it's basically making us think about, it's making us want to evaluate, so how do we stand with our friends around the world? How do we stand with our friends, you know, even here at home? How are our relationships? What state are they in? And really, at this point, we're losing friends by the day. Because, you know, we've turned into hypocrites, and we've let ourselves become the muscle for this global commercial and financial empire. People are leaving us, and they don't trust us anymore because, you know, we've been breaking so many promises. We broke all of our promises with Russia about the expansion of NATO. In 1995, a treaty was signed in Belgrade, the Belgrade Agreement, saying the United States wouldn't expand NATO through Central Europe and Eastern Europe. It happened anyway. And the country, the companies that puppeteer this American empire, they're pushing GMOs closer to the borders of Russia. And Russia doesn't allow GMO foods. So they're pretty pissed off about that. And they're pretty pissed off about having U.S. military putting strategic weapons on their borders. You know, because NATO, um, Poland's come into NATO. They want to bring Ukraine in. Um, it's very hypocritical, but if they put missiles or troops in Canada or Mexico, we'd have a shit fit. So... Yeah, we need to get back to being genuinely friendly and to not being condescending and acting like overlords and treating other countries like they're beneath us, even if they're not as wealthy and not as robust and not as, you know, big and populated. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for that new moon. Um, I could go on and on, but I've got, my, uh, I've got some work to get to, so thanks for tuning in. I'm ending at 33 minutes, and um, talk to you later. My site is thecosmicalchemist.com. You can book readings. I've got some Qigong videos for download as well, if you want to check those out. So thanks a lot. Have a nice one.